So here's one of our biggest problems. We just talked about some of this in the port presentation and in the exposome presentation. When we talk about breast cancer and we talk about small places, we have small numbers of cases. We have a very hard time establishing what a cancer cluster really is. So we need a different intermediate marker, and I think I know the right one. <laughs> breast density, dense breasts, are a very strong risk factor for breast cancer, and we have no idea what causes them. But we also know we can change the density of a woman's breast really easily. We give her drugs that block hormones or that change hormones, we change them, and we change them quickly. There have been clinical trials that show this. But giving drugs, like Mel said earlier, is not a really good idea for healthy women. There are side effects. So if we know we can change this really strong risk factor, we need to figure out how we can do it. We now have resources in this state that could be used with your inflammation project, your port project, your exposome project to make this happen. Because since 2013, sorry, since 2013, the state of California is reporting the density of your breast on your mammogram, whether you want it or not, and whether you know what to do with it or not. 80% of women over the age of 40 in this state, including women of color, are receiving mammograms and receiving that density data. That data is sitting there for us to mine. And every community has a score on density. Even if you don't have enough breast cancer cases to study by a port, you can look at the density scores of women who live there as an outcome, as a, an indicator of risk. And because density might even be a cause of breast cancer, might, maybe if you switch it and you change it, you actually could, within five years, because you can change it in two or three weeks, prevent breast cancer within five years, which is what I was kind of after when I was working on this project. All of the things that you want to correlate with density, the exposome, and genetics, and the interaction between the exposome and genetics, inflammation, and where you live, residents near exposure, can be looked at in relation to density, and changes in density are a great indicator. Now, yes, you actually also can look at density in younger women. So here's, here's what I, I'm proposing that we do. We take the resources of California, the density data, we take the existing cohorts that Vincent was just talking about. We have in our own cohort, samples that start before birth. We have in utero exposures. There are other cohorts that have puberty exposures. There are other cohorts that have perimenopausal exposures. These are all critical periods of development for breast cancer. These blood samples can be interrogated, and the density scores of these women can be looked at. And there are measures of density you even could use in younger girls if you wish, but you'd have to collect more data, and you can't promise that one in five years can start with the women who are of age at risk. And then what can we do? California has enormous resources also that we've mapped the pollution of this state. I wasn't going to really show you this slide, but now I'm going to do it. We have a biomonetary program. We have um, a state that has been mapped. We have, if it would hurry up, it's not working. OK, let's try it again. No, it's not working. OK, it's an animated slide, but forget it. Don't look at it. Um, oh, there it is. There's our woman. She gets her mammogram results. There are all these other women who get mammogram results. Many of these women have donated blood samples decades before, or even up to the time just before their mammogram. Many, many, many of these women. We need to know how that blood directly correlates. It's internal dose, not an ecological study, the internal dose and its relationship to their own density score. And then there's the state of California, which has been mapped for pollution, for poverty, for you name it, we got it. We can find the women who are at low risk by area and the women at high risk by area. And what this does is create an enormous opportunity, but the only way to do this is with a coalition of scientists who can share their data, of advocates who can be get going. This could be a Mongo project, a huge project, <laughs> a demonstration project that doesn't require that we measure breast cancer in everybody, but that we account for the strongest risk, risk factor that we know of, that we think we could change. And maybe we actually could influence the risk of this disease. We know that identical twins do not have identical breasts. We already know that this is not a characteristic that is driven only by genes. So I hope 
CBCRFP could consider funding this, it also could force a coalition. Force, that's a bad word. <laughs> Motivate a coalition to share data. There you go. <laughs> that was great. Force is a bad word. Yes. <laughs> Judges, do you okay. have any questions? Any judge have any question? Yes. In, in your bold collaborative project, what type of interventions would you envision would follow from collecting the data? Well, um, all sorts. So the opportunity is there for individual change, which we've heard about. There are ways to avoid products and things that are related to density. But I think far more important is we, need, we could collectively find ways to clean up air and water, especially in communities that are impacted. The port community is a great example. We need to know where, that's why the maps are so important. The ecological data is considered weaker by some people, but if you start with the blood work and look for endocrine disrupting compounds, and then identify the places that have um, pollution that's related to those compounds, and then move into those communities and map the density scores in the ports or wherever else you are looking, you all of a sudden can create an advocacy community. Women are really upset about these scores. They don't know what to do about them. And I actually think you can create a groundswell of interest with leadership from the existing advocacy community in California. I think it's doable, but it's, it's, it's got to be a big project. It, and, and I think only CBCRP can do this. NIH is not going to fund this. You can, it's just not. So I would encourage you to, and, and this would, advantage probably every single researcher in this room, including all the people who are her trying to get money for their work. <laughs> <laughs> including me. <laughs> we have a three generation cohort. We've been looking at risk. We are establishing that things start early and keep going. Yes, if you, if you haven't looked at their study, you should, uh, you should definitely do it. It's kind of mind-blowing and makes you just want to go home and get in bed. We, we actually have preliminary data on density, too. So we know that it is driven by environment. So um, it's just doable. Do it, please. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry. Thank you so much. Oh.